So this is Bayard's Cove, where, as my old mate Ken Nightingale said, the Pilgrim Fathers put out to sea. Unfortunately, they didn't get very far because they had to turn round and put back into Plymouth because the speedwell, the accompanying boat, was leaking badly. Now it's where the ferry goes across to Kingswear. Car ferry. One of the oldest parts of Dartmouth here. So here we are in Dartmouth. This is, uh, was supposed to be the final destination of the Mayflower. But unfortunately, it had to put back into Plymouth because the speedwell was leaking. It had come over from Holland with many of the pilgrims on board, put into London to Rotherhithe, and uh, you will have seen the picture of the pub there called the Mayflower, which was there when the Mayflower went through. It then went to Southampton and was supposed to sail from Southampton to the New World. But then put into Dartmouth again because of the speedwell leaking. Left Dartmouth and got about 200 or 300 miles off of Cornwall. I had to turn round again and come back because the speedwell was hopelessly leaking again. So. In the end, on the 6th of September, 1620, the Mayflower left Plymouth for the New World. And it took about two months for it to get there of a very difficult journey across the Atlantic. So you can see in this clip here, the uh, voyage the uh, Mayflower took with the Speedwell from Dartmouth out into the Atlantic Ocean before having to turn around and return to Plymouth. So here we are at the Mayflower Memorial in Plymouth, England. So you see the two flags flying, the British and the American flag. I believe they're both the same size and both flying at the same height, which will no doubt interest some people. But uh, these are indeed the Mayflower steps, right in the part of um, the Barbican, which is the oldest area of Plymouth. Of course, the city was supposed to be enjoying huge celebrations at the moment, but unfortunately, our good friend COVID has put paid to that. Mayflower was originally heading for Virginia, but uh, the gales and winds of the North Atlantic pushed the ship to the north, and eventually, after two months and three days of arduous sailing uh, they spotted Cape Cod. Um, Cape Cod had no water or very little water so eventually uh, they established Plymouth, what would become Plymouth, Massachusetts across the bay uh, a month or so later. 
So it's at this time now that I'm going to indulge myself in a few personal reminiscences, not that I can uh, remember back to the original Mayflower, obviously. Although I've met a number of my customers, visitors to this country, who say they can actually trace their ancestry back to people who came across on the Mayflower. So in the mid-1950s, uh, a guy called Warwick Charlton, um, who had been fought in the World War with Americans, um, decided he wanted to try and build a replica of the Mayflower to um, float across to Plymouth, Massachusetts, um, which would serve as a tangible link between our countries, which I thought was rather a good idea. And I have memories of that. So this is Brixham. And this is where the replica of the Mayflower was made, Mayflower 2. It was built here in Upham Shipyard in 1956. The boatyard was just behind those houses. And uh, basically it was built here in 1956. I have some old photos of it floating, having been launched here in Brixham. And then it went round to Dartmouth, where um, it was floating in the River Dart there for what seemed like ages. I was a young child, five years old, and it seemed like it was there for ages. Brixham is a lovely little fishing town. Um, light isn't very good at the moment with the sun shining. You can probably see that it's a gorgeous little place, has lots of history, and uh, sea related and uh, shipping related. When I was a child, I can remember Mayflower 2, the replica of the Mayflower, floating in the river here for what seemed like ages. It must have been for many months waiting for the time when it would uh, sail across to the New World again, to uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts. It was built just along the coast in Brixham by Upham's shipbuilders and uh, came here in 1957 and was floating, waiting to go off. Um, I believe it went out with the tall ships race of that year. Mayflower 2 left Plymouth, England on the 20th of April 1957, arriving across the Atlantic at Plymouth, Massachusetts on the 22nd of June the same year, just one day less than the original Mayflower trip. So I consider myself very fortunate to have not only come from a town where the original Mayflower um, left from, but also to have seen Mayflower 2 floating in the River Dart when I was a child. And then visiting Mayflower in Massachusetts, up, I think three times, as well as visiting um, the amazing Plymouth Plantation. When you're on the, the ship and also in the plantation, the people there, are, who essentially are tour guides, they are living in the 1600s. So they don't know anything about aeroplanes, they don't know anything about Boston. Um, it's a fascinating place to visit, which I think everybody who possibly can should visit the place. I remember on one of the occasions when I went to Plymouth Plantation that one of the people there said to me, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Gloucestershire. And they said, ah, Gloucestershire, the, the old country. We have a brother here who lives in Wooden Under Edge. And it made my hair stand on end, if I had any hair, because that is literally just about five down, miles down the road from where I live. 
I also explored Cape Cod, interesting place. I met a lady over there who told me about her family and uh, that they could trace themselves back to the Mayflower. When the Mayflower stopped over there, her family got off and stayed there. So the final trip for Mayflower 2 was to go down the coast um, last year to Mystic Seaport where she went through an $11 million refit, arriving back in uh, Plymouth, Massachusetts just this year. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to subscribe and comment if you wish. Thank you very much for watching.